All right, we'll call this session to order of this committee of Bankers Equity Committee of the Assembly. It's called to order officially at this particular point in time. We open for welcomes and introductions. I am Pastor May Leon May, here of the Desert Community Church and uh, Interdenominational Ministerial Alliance, Martin Luther King Jr. Foundation of Alaska, and I'll stop. Uh, my name is Thea Agnew Bembet, and I'm one of the co-chairs of the committee. Hi, folks. Felix Ferreira here with the Equity Assembly representing Motel. Hello, everyone. I'm Celeste Hodge Groudon, President and CEO of the Alaska Black Caucus. And I am Candace Bell, representing Sage Alaska, an organization of LGBT elders. I'm Jasmine Akers, records clerk and staff to the committee. Andrea, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Andrea Antone. I'm staffer for the committee. All right. And I guess at this particular point, we're, we're moving toward unfinished business. And uh, Mr. Rivera is going to discuss some special committee logistics. Great, wonderful. Um, thanks for giving me the time to do this. So I'm gonna try to run through this quickly and I'm happy to uh, do my best to answer whatever questions that y'all have. Um, so basically what I wanted to do was um, figure out what type of rules, whether they be state or local rules that this committee would have to follow uh, in terms of a lot of the um, type of rules that the assembly has to follow. So I asked the um, basic question to assembly council, does this committee have to follow the same rules as any of the other committees? And the short answer was yes, this committee does have to follow a lot of the other rules that the other committees do. So digging into the specific details here, what are some of those rules? Um, I just wanted to get clarity. So. One of the rules I asked, does uh, this committee, do committee members have to follow the Open Meetings Act and more specifically the rule of three in the Open Meetings Act? So for folks who don't know what the rule of three is, uh, that is um, for, I sort of divide it into two categories, process and policy. So if any committee members want to talk about policy that may be coming before this committee for discussion uh, or a possible vote, uh, then the rule of three applies. If committee members are just discussing process, then the rule of three does not apply. What is that rule of three? That means that outside of publicly noticed meetings, no more than three committee members can discuss a topic. Um, so if Celeste, Pastor May, Theo wanted to talk about body worn cameras and a specific resolution or something that they wanted to bring for body worn cameras, then those are the only three that can talk about it before it gets to this committee. Um, then, you know, when it gets to this committee, all of the committee members can talk about it. Another thing that we also do a lot is um, have the clerk's office. If you want to email certain things out, you have the clerk's office email things out, and the clerk's office can compile, um, like, I want to send out a draft, send me your thoughts before the committee. The clerk's office can send that out, and the clerk's office can compile all of the comments that they receive and give that back to you. But you can't ask all of the committee members for that via email, right? So um, that's, that's the basic, right? So rule of three for policy, has to be in a publicly noticed meeting. Otherwise, you have to go through the clerk's office for process. You don't have to worry about rule of three. Uh, let me, can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. All right, a question relative to the rule of three and purpose. Uh, my understanding from your synopsis is that uh, the rule of three is designed to uh, prohibit impromptu committed meetings uh, per se. So the rule of three is a state law, and it comes from the Open Meetings Act. And uh, basically, as I understand, I, I did this is a decades old law, so I didn't have any 
I wasn't there when it was written or um, approved by the legislature, but my understanding is that it ensured that any business of the public interest is done in public meetings, that it isn't done behind closed doors. Well, that was my point, that that uh, you can have an impromptu meeting of, of, more, of, if you get more than three, you basically have a meeting outside of the meeting. And uh, the rule of three, as I understand what you're saying, prohibits that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then the second item um, that I wanted to ask specific is, are committee members subject to public records requests? And the answer to that is yes, committee members are subject to public records requests. Typically the way that those handle are the public records requests are sent to the clerk's office. Then the clerk works with legal to figure out whether it's a proper public records request or they have to narrow the scope of the request. Then um, whoever is requesting it has to pay, and then um, assuming that they pay for it and that it is a proper request, then the request will go to whoever specifically they name. So they have to name specific individuals in their public records request. Um, I will say it's usually, um, I don't know if I've ever seen public records, records, public records requests go to boards and commissions. Maybe they have, and I just haven't heard about it. It's typically only assembly members that get public records requests. But just know that it is something that could happen. Can you give just a little, like maybe a couple examples of what that might look like? Or <laughs> sure. So um, let's see. Happy to speak to the most recent public records request we got, which uh, is a very different example than what might happen at a committee. But we got a public records request that was approved from a good friend of mine, and uh, basically it is asking for any texts that were sent uh, to, I think it's to other assembly members during assembly meetings, regular or special assembly meetings in the last 90 days. Um, so a, a lot of the times, the public, public records requests, just being you know, totally honest, a lot of them are politically bent, so people want to know certain amount, certain information so that they can attack assembly members with that information. Um, another public request we got was uh, the Blue Alaskan. So um, a certain member of the public wanted to know if any assembly members in a certain time span, I forget what it was, had received any emails or sent any emails about the Blue Alaskan. Because at the time, there's a lot of people wanting to know what the, who the identity of the Blue Alaska is, right? So um, those are just two examples. We, we get, the, the assembly is, uh, we've slowed down, but there was one point where we got a new public records request a week. And, and then if that request is um, approved, mm -hmm. then like you, Felix, have to give up your phone, or how does that work? Yeah, so this text one is new. We've never had a text one before. So um, basically what uh, they're having us do is having us catalog, go, go through our texts, and uh, basically, uh, this is going to be a bit of a work for us, but um, go and go through our texts for the last 90 days and see at, on this day, on November 14th, or whenever the last assembly meeting was, from 5 o'clock to whenever the assembly meeting ended, go through all of those texts and then catalog those and send those to the clerk's office. Um, there's, there's a little bit more. Um, we have to figure out if those texts are related to the public record, not just like, hi, Suzanne, like none of those texts count. But if it's specific to the public record and public um, business, then we send those texts to the clerk's office. Otherwise, if it's emails, this won't count for public for, for you all, but if it's emails and the clerk's office has access to our municipal emails, and so they do that work themselves, and then we have to go through our private emails to see for you, excuse me, using our private emails for public business, and um, then we have to go through and send any of those emails to the clerk's office. So um, I would imagine if any public records requests for email stuff came for committee members of this committee, then you all would have to go through it because the clerk's office is not going to have access to whatever you know we use for our communication. So the request, excuse me, uh, the request uh, for public records is directly related to 
the business of the committee? Um, not necessarily. So um, they, they could ask really any question that they're interested in. So has any committee member of, or typically they have to name specific committee members, have X, Y, and Z committee members of the Anchorage Equity Committee of the Assembly um, mentioned, I don't know, body one cameras in any of their emails in the last 90 days? Um, sort of, uh, I guess there would have to be some boundaries that the clerk's office and the Department of uh, Law would have to put on that because uh, it would have to be communications maybe between committee members or communications that are specific to this committee. Um, so they would put boundaries on it, they'd give you some clear instructions, uh, and then you know, hopefully, if you have any questions, you could probably consult with our attorney. I'm giving you all of this information, not necessarily to freak anyone out, but just to tell you, like, I just want you to be aware of the possibilities. Yeah, and, and so I guess my question is, and, and you kind of ran down that trail, my question is, is it confined to committee-related work and nothing outside of committee-related work? Is that is what I'm getting to? Yeah, so I guess that goes to intent, right? So sticking to the body worn camera, you know, if you're working on body worn cameras but it has nothing to do with this committee, you're doing it as whatever organization that you're representing or a part of, then I would imagine, not being a lawyer, but I would imagine that none of that is part of a public records request. But if you're working on body worn cameras as part of this committee and someone does put a, a public records request, then that would be included. Thank you. Okay, so the next one was on subcommittees, because I know that this committee has talked about the idea of creating subcommittees. And um, basically the question I asked was, do all the, the same rules apply in terms of the Open Meetings Act and publicly noticing subcommittees of the Equity Committee? And the answer there was yes. Then I asked a theoretical question about lawsuits, because again, I don't want to freak anyone out, but I just want to give you all of the information. Um, so if someone were to sue the equity committee for, I can't even imagine why, but let's just say they wanted to, um, then the answer I got is that it, it partly depends on the grounds for the lawsuit, but for the most part, um, like 99.9% .9 of the time, uh, those lawsuits aren't gonna necessarily go towards um, an individual. They might name you in the lawsuit, but they're gonna go towards the municipality, and the municipality will defend and deal with all that stuff. Putting as someone who has had a lot of lawsuits that have named me individually, um, I don't have to do much with it. The, the Department of Law will tell me, hey, there's a new lawsuit, and you're named in that lawsuit. Here's what we're gonna do, don't worry about it, and then I will hear you know, three months later, okay, that lawsuit was dismissed for X, Y, Z reason, right? I don't, I'm, and it's, that's what I'll find back. I don't have to worry about it. So that is, I imagine, if any such lawsuits were to occur, that is the process that would happen. Then um, the attorney did add one here that I forgot to add, which is are public uh, members of the committee subject to the ethics code and um, that is a no, and I would imagine that's probably because the ethics code applies only to elected official where a certain quasi-judicial um, appointments. And because none committee members aren't in those categories, the ethics code does not apply to you all. Um, then the last question I asked was about honorarium. And um, so the answer I got was, that it has to be specifically provided for in municipal code. And it doesn't look like it is specifically provided for in municipal code. Um, the sort of runaround to that is that the there could be honorarium if the assembly as a body decided to provide that uh, whether that's in a resolution or an ordinance, either an ordinance changing 
municipal code to provide for that or a resolution um, basically stating our policy intents and providing for the um, funding to do so. Um, so that is the response there. And I think those were the list of questions. So, so in other words, as it relates to our horarium, that is something that the assembly uh, could make a decision on. Yeah, if it's something that this um, committee is interested in exploring further, yes, it is something that um, the committee could, you know, it would basically be like putting up a resolution or an ordinance for a public vote, uh, or not rather a vote at a, at a assembly meeting, and we would vote on it at an assembly meeting. Thank you. Chair Skinner, question? Yes. Um, hi, Marie Hisa. Sorry, I'm late. Uh, and with the few things I caught for the honoraria, is it, I think, joining this equity committee and how different it is, you know, like how really we modeled it from the COVID task force, and there were a lot of benefits from that of bringing in. Um, community members and part of that was valuing the time of community members to learn about our communities and also in exchange for that time was valued with those honorariums. Now as something that if the committee wants to move forward with that idea because I think someone has to start that because I mean we, we've done it in the past but now for the municipality to continue that and just Full disclosure, I'm a muni employee, but as I'm asking as committee member, member of the public, because I'm sure it would have, it'll be messier for a muni employee. But how can we move forward? What would be the first step? I'm thinking the equity officer, it might be appropriate, or maybe even within his duties. Is that something that you would recommend? And if so, how do we go about that in an appropriate way. I guess I have a clarifying question. So are you speaking specifically for getting honorary for members of this committee or are you speaking on a broader scale? Well, we'll start with a member of this committee and hopefully start it for anything similar that requires knowledge of input, you know, of the community members. Yeah, so I, I would say for this committee, I don't see a reason why the chief equity officer would need to be involved. Uh, because it's really this is an assembly committee and the chief equity officer is an administrative employee so i don't see why they would necessarily have much input there unless okay. you know this committee specifically wanted the chief equity officer to provide input that's uh, this committee's decision um otherwise i would say i think the process would simply be this committee maybe puts forward some type of resolution uh that gets sent to or it could be simple. It could be like just a letter from the co-chairs, uh, if you wanted to keep it simple, uh, and sent it to the, let's just say for now, the assembly liaisons or which are Cameron and I, or to the full body requesting that we take action on this, and then it would be up to the assembly to take action. Gotcha. Thank you. Yeah, and that would that would have been my thought. Just uh, give it to you guys and let you take it to the assembly and go from there. I have a question. Um, Celeste Hodge Crowden. Is the process now, since you're going through the budget, would that be the appropriate time to submit that document to you? Yeah, you know, I, I, it might be a little bit late in the process because we're going to be voting on the budget on Tuesday. But you certainly could submit, um, if you wanted to include it for Tuesday. I would suggest you submit it to Cameron and I soon with uh, maybe even a ballpark number. And so what I would do is I would reach out to the budget co-chairs, Forrest and Austin, who are putting forward an omnibus amendment. And I might just ask them to increase, there's an amendment that's specifically for the assembly department. I might just ask them to increase that one by whatever dollar amount that you all suggest. That would be the simplest way to get it done. So, so with that in mind, then what we would need to do is, is determine 
what that amount is and how often. Thank you. Co-chairs, are we needing a motion to move in that direction or are we, is this also moved? Seconded. It's been moved. <laughs> Do you want to just, like, just state, state, state the, motion. the motion? Yeah. It's like, what, 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 what are we, should we discuss? So, so honorarium, I make a motion that the, the, that the committee put forward a resolution or to the appropriate individuals to, for an honorarium. I don't know the amount. Um, and I, I like to see that be presented at this upcoming Tuesday assembly meeting. So that's a, that's a stating of a motion, but if I were to to carry that, I would have I would I would have a question. Number one is is as was forestated, we would need an amount, and we would need intervals, time intervals of which that amount would be appropriated to committed members, and so so my thinking is that we probably need to have discussion before motion so we can ascertain what that figure would look like and how often, and then put it in motion form and pass it to go forward to. So if I may, um, really for the budget process, we just need an amount. I would say the committee could deal with the technicalities of how often and how much. So I just need like a do you want us to set aside 500000 for honorary? Do you want us to set aside, yeah. hopefully not that much, yeah. uh, do you want us to set aside 50000 for honorary? Like, yeah, like yeah, what, yeah. What, is, what do you want us to do? Yeah. And so that would that amount would be for annually? Correct. Okay. And I, I was just trying to pull up the charter, but I, I'm not online, so I don't have it right here. But do you happen to have it, Jasmine? Because if you could just read to us the part about honoraria, because I think it sets kind of pretty clear parameters around who, who can request one or who gets one. So maybe that will help us figure out. Uh, but, I didn't recall you going into that kind of detail, but still, yeah. But it might also be mixing it up. But yes. it sounds like that information is not needed right now. Okay. What is needed is an amount of like $50,000 um, to satisfy what's needed at this time. And then, you know, at a later date, we can talk about the particulars, even look at the document. But, but in addition, I mean, I'm just wondering, 50,000 for the honorarium. Well, I, and, but there are other needs that this committee might um, need the funding for. So we have to be careful about that motion, that it's not just specific to the honorarium. Do you like I have a question? Do other community members who serve on boards and commissions receive our area? No. And so how much? No. no. Thank you. We would be a first. <laughs> mm, not a first in municipal history, just the first in a long time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You about to say something before? Um, I just was trying to think of a way for us to calculate sort of the ballpark amount and just thinking we have 12 meetings a year, they're an hour and a half. And so, and maybe we can think of like a proportion of folks who probably would want an honorary. Yeah. Well, my, my, my thinking on it is yes, we have 12 meetings a year, and uh, but when you think in terms of the, the number of committee members that we have and that the committee could grow and uh, that kind of thing. Uh, how many, by the ballpark, how many members do you think we have now? Well, there's there's probably, there's quite a few on our, there's probably right. 30 to 50 on our email list, Jasmine, what are you? Uh, through the chairs, it's 32 right okay, now. Okay, cool, so 32. Okay. And then, um, I mean, I can tell you from the year when we were the vaccine committee, and also we usually have 30 to 35 people showing up, but sometimes more. Um, we probably only had less than five a month that would have an honorary. More like more usually around about three. Um, 
and then and then on that thought, my, my thought on that is if we're going to uh, go to the assembly to get an amount for honorariums that I really don't think it would be apropos to be questioning whether somebody want one or doesn't want one. If we just provide it, if we're going to get a figure, then we just provide it to those who serve. And so they would get it regardless. Mm, I would want one. Yeah. Yeah, I think it has to be up to. Um, I, yeah, I think it's okay. nice to find a way of giving it. Okay. Yeah, I. I yeah, I feel like if it's, um, I mean, some people are able to be on the committee as part of their jobs, or at least close enough. Um, and then other people are, are just doing it as a volunteer. So I don't know if there's any way for us to I, identify who on the committee is a volunteer. And then when one of those folks shows up at the meeting, we automatically give the, the honorary. I think that could be nice. You know, because even with the other committee, I've never requested one, but okay, periodically you, we will receive it, you know, and so that's kind of what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. So, so can the $50,000 request be inclusive of honorarium and other, other projects that we're working on? We're going to be involved in the community, and there's going to be um, projects that we're working on. We can utilize funding. I see a lot of organizations that fall short because they don't have funding for things and if we really want the equity um, committee to be really successful out in the community, um, we're going to need funds. And so that that's my um, recommendation is that we fund, we provide, we secure funding to operate and to be visible in the community. So I think 50000 is a bit. The, the, the best is, Mr. Rivera, uh, what happens to funding appropriated that does not get used? Sure. So if it doesn't get used by the end of the calendar year, it goes into the fund balance. Okay. So with that in mind, my thought process would be to ask a request for much more than you think you need. And uh, and if it doesn't get used, it goes back into. So we we're talking fifty thousand. I mean, out of a municipal budget and all of the appropriations, I don't think that even a hundred thousand would be too much to ask for. And especially in light, especially in view and in light of the fact of you're intimating at this particular point that funding could be included in that, not only for honorariums but other things that we're doing. And so what does not get used would go back in the fund account on an annual basis. So, but if needed and necessary, it's available. If you don't use it, it just goes back in. Mr. Rivera, sorry for calling you Felix. <laughs> um, I have another question. Does any other board or committee have an operating budget? Um, I, I wanna, my gut answer to that is no. Um, there might be like departments, so I'm thinking actually of the Equal Rights Commission where they have a budget and they do a lot of different community events where their commission is involved in those, but that's very different. I can't think of any other boards and commissions where they have a budget to do their work. Can, can I just, okay. I just want to say one thing. I, I just feel a little bit nervous about us having a budget, like right off the bat, partly because you know, we just spent like three or four months putting the charter together and right now the charter doesn't really have anything in there that would help us decide how to spend money um, or kind of what the mechanism would be. I'm just, like, if we had a budget, I'm just trying to think like how would that get spent? I guess I just don't have any sense of that. Like, like just like what the mechanics would be like. And also, I'm just curious too, Celeste, from what you shared, and also you, Pastor Jane, what what kinds of activities are you thinking we would um, support with the budget? So through the co-chairs, <laughs> there are so many missed opportunities that the municipality um, does not engage in because simply they don't have that mechanism. 
I mean, there's one group that receives a lot of um, support right now, but the majority of cultural groups don't. And it would be great to have um, an entity like the Equity Committee um, be that avenue. So we are more in tune and we're in touch with the, the entire community, the diverse community out there, the folks that are not often connected to. And that's the, one, that's the individuals, that's the groups we're trying to reach. And the reason why we don't have anything like that is because we've never had an equity committee. This is the first time that we're, I, what, I, what I'm thinking about is when we had Mayor Beggage and he created my position and I was the diversity um, champion. We created Mayor's Diversity Month. It was an opportunity for us to get out in the community. So, so there's, the opportunities are endless. We just need an avenue to do it. And then the sky will have nothing on us. And so, you know, I'm thinking about cultural events that are upcoming. I'm thinking about you know, every time I turn around, there's something happening in the community that the municipality is not at. We could be the voice for the state as it relates to diversity and equity. Just a response, a comment. Um, I agree with Celeste that there's a great deal that needs to be done. I think it's a little premature in terms of this year and this budget. Um, to try and budget for such things for the exact reason that was previously stated is we don't really know what we're budgeting for. Um, and as a former accountant, it's hard for me to envision a budget without attaching that to something more material and more planned. And, and, and I was about to say, it, and you broached a part of what I was thinking, this is a new, new committee, we've never had one before, and we've talked about that in in, in almost, well, I won't say that much, because it hasn't been that much. But anyway, we've talked about it quite a bit, that this is brand new, and uh, so we don't have a paradigm. We're creating one as we go. And so the bottom line is, you, you mentioned the budgeting aspect of uh, even the charter. Well, the charter provides for, uh, just off the top of my head, provides for interfacing with the community as it relates to diversity and whatever needs we have to do that. And uh, my thinking is, I'm always of the mind that as it relates to funding, it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. it that, that's always been my, my mindset for that. Uh, now, you said the budgeting aspect of Georgia doesn't provide necessarily per se for budgeting, but we have never gone this far and this deep, you know, in our, in our conceptualizing what we're going to be about and what we're going to do. And so having not done that, uh, my thinking would be the committee as a whole, uh, if we had funding and something came up, would make a committee decision on what we would do at that particular point when it came up. But it's better to have it and not need it, in my mind, than to need it and not have it. Mm -hmm. so, I have a question. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, two parts. First, uh, Mr. Rivera, for, to be included in the assembly meeting, how much justification do we need at that point just to add a dollar amount? Yeah, thanks. So to be included in the budget, I need a dollar amount and a specific use. Okay. So I'd like to add that in a, I agree to what Celeste said that we're new. We want to just go out there and take advantage of all the opportunities we have. But also, I mean, the possibilities are endless. What are the possibilities? And looking for, but also a, a muni employee, uh, you know, with a budget and what the feeling is with budget. I mean, working for the Equal Rights Commission, our um, non-labor budget is right around $50,000. So comparing that, but then again, comparing to what the total budget of this administration is, I, 
I just don't want to think from that scarcity point of view that we should ask for it because as people of color, we just need to do that and nobody's going to do it for us. So I, I, my uh, suggestion would be to have just for the honoraria, just a total because at this point, we don't know yet what we're gonna do. So get it's new and we don't want to, I, I know us people of color, we're probably tired of being careful, trying to just get a, get a space at the table, a seat at the table, right? But I think it would help us to strategize, do some, feel it out this year, what it is that's out there. Yeah. Just to add, sorry to interrupt. So I don't think you have to wait a full year. Oh, okay. Um, so the budget process for the municipality is in two phases, right? Yeah. We have the November where we budget for the full for the upcoming yeah. year, and then we have April, which is when we do revisions to the budget, yeah. which we call first the first quarter, quarter process. Yeah. That is when we will know how much money we're going to have in our fund balance left over from last year. And I highly suspect, just based off of um, a lot of the information that I know about where we're getting a lot of extra money from bed tax and all the other things that we're going to have a, a possibly significant fund balance where we're going to be able to maybe spend some of that money in a wise way. So perhaps just offering my advice, if you just want to keep it to honorarium for now and then plan for the next few months and then it's really going to be in March, where you're going to want to present a plan for us that will improve during the first quarter budget revision in April. That might be the easiest way to realistically get some money for this committee. That's great input. Yeah, uh, so what do you think, uh, I guess without coming up with the guidelines yet, because I imagine the administration and somebody might ask about what is the eligibility for the honorariums we're, honorarium we're giving out. Um, do we need to have all those defined for this round? Um, I would say uh, it, it would be helpful. I, I'm just thinking, so what's likely going to happen is the mayor is going to veto a variety of things that he does not like. I would imagine, to be honest, that this is probably going to be on the veto list, the honorary for this committee, in which case it would be up to the assembly to override the veto. I don't think any amount of detail that you give is going to prevent the mayor from overriding the veto. Right. Yeah, yeah, understood. I guess just in closing, I just want to say that in addition to that, that we come up with a strong either a resolution or a strategic plan, that that's what we want, that that's what we're paving the way for. And what and why. So at the very minimum, if we can't get money, that to have that strong statement somewhere. Thank you. Yeah, and my, and my thinking along those lines, uh, since there's a revision time coming, uh, if we did say request, quote unquote, $100,000 for our area for the annual, and uh, in the revising of it, then uh, we could uh, itemize uh, some things that some of that money could cover as it relates to that revision this time. Yeah, so if I understand what you're saying, is budget 100000 now, and then you're, I mean, unless you're on a very on a huge, you're not going to use anywhere near 100000 Well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, right. So, so that's the idea. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So um, whatever whatever isn't realistically going to be used for honor area, then you would budget in first during first quarter budget revisions for whatever other needs that this committee has. Um, yeah, I mean that is an avenue that that could work. I imagine. I have to say that makes me nervous, and I don't. I don't want to be the like naysayer at all. So yep, I'm just so. putting it out there. <laughs> um, I just really don't want to create a public impression that we start a committee and then the first thing we do is decide to pay ourselves. I just. I don't want that narrative to like, you know, attack us at the very outset. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we talked about at the last meeting 
was, and I'm, I'm curious during our assembly updates to just hear a little bit more from Felix about this, but like some of the things Celeste was just mentioning about how like there's these all these opportunities, but the, the municipality is like disconnected from them. And there's all these funding opportunities that don't end up going to organizations that are led by BIPOC members and for BIPOC communities. That's like, so I guess what, what I would love to see is, is like Marie was saying, is us to come up with kind of a plan of like, this is where we really feel like we can be most effective. And some of the things that could be on that plan are, for example, when the health department has funding they're trying to get out, you know, this committee could really be active in, in, in sharing that information with communities, making sure, maybe even reviewing the funding, um, the RFP or whatever to make sure it's accessible. Like, I guess I, I feel like we could, and that way we don't have to take on the role of dispersing funds, public funds, which has a lot I mean, there's so many strings attached to that. We leave that job to the administration, the departments, but we can be instrumental in helping get it to the right places. And so I guess I would be more comfortable with us asking for a budget beyond honorary. I think we do that right now. But once we have more of a plan, because I, I would want to be able to say, like, here's the things we're really going to try and work on in the next three, in next year and that's why we need and I, I feel like from what Felix is saying we could we could still request a significant amount in April. We don't have to do it now. Like we could do our honorary now and then fund our plan in April. Well that's what I just said. But I don't think we have to request it. Like for me the honorary, like I was just thinking like hundred fifty dollars a meeting would still be a lot because it's an hour and a half meeting. Five people do that, that would be a lot of people actually, just based on last time, but that would be 750 a meeting, you know, times 12, that's nine grand. You know, I just feel like the honoraria piece is maybe like 10 grand or less. Um, and we probably still have some left over. So, I don't know, that's kind of where I'm feeling. Yeah, yeah that kind of depends upon who would want it out of 30 some folk. That would have to be canvas from one. But secondly, you kind of said what I said, we could do the honorarium thing now and then revisit yeah. it later after we have a plan in mm -hmm. place that's more structured. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what I would, yeah. Cool. So my okay. plan makes my little accountant's heart happy. <laughs> but, but I think that they could, the issue is the amount versus, so you're looking at more of about 20,000, 25,000 versus 100. I just think if we're caught, Calling it honoraria, then I don't want people to think we're, you know, paying our members, you know, thousands of dollars per meeting. That's all. And see, for me, I'd rather do the community engagement pieces, utilize the funding for that, than an honorarium. I mean, yeah. And if that's if that's what we, so that so I think that's all. That's exactly what I'm saying too. If, if we want to between now and, and probably more like February or March, come up with a plan that's really focused on community engagement and then request a hundred grand for that. That's That sounds good to me. I'm just nervous about asking for a big amount now at the beginning for honoraria. Okay, so, so, so here's my thought on that after a little calculating. If, if we requested 60,000 for honoraria at this particular point, and the reason why I came to 60 is about 57 6 really but the reason why I came to 60 is you mentioned 150 dollars per meeting and you mentioned you know five or seven folk and all that but my thinking on that would be uh if we're going to request honorarium and say we use the 150 dollar figure at 12 times a year then that 150 dollars would be set aside for the 32 whether they take it or not, and then if you had something out of the 60 left over, it goes back anyway. But, you know, at least set it up for the whole committee, whether they take it or not. And, you know, when you start talking 150 a meeting, you know that they're, I mean, that's right, we're on record, but we'll have more folks attending the meetings, I believe. Well, that would be a plus, considering what we're looking at now. <laughs> yeah. 
And just from my equal rights background voice coming out, I, I do I do recommend really strict eligibility on that because we don't want her so to open up ourselves for complaints of why she got this, what was it for, and why didn't I get it? Do I apply? So it really needs to be defined of eligibility and for what. Yeah, yeah, so that's what I'm saying. It should be provided for the whole committee, whether the whole committee takes it or not. So that way, somebody won't have questions of whether it, it's there for you, whether you want it or not. And uh, at the end of the term, if we don't use it, it just rolls in the funding. Okay. So about 60000 would be covered off. It's for you. Um, but just imagine if we took that 60000 and we utilized it out in the community to those groups. I mean, just I'm just thinking about the groups out there that we know of, that at least I know of, that say that they tried to secure funding but couldn't. I mean, but we were that avenue that they could come before us and talk about their program or an event that they have coming up, some type of a diversity celebration, which is what we're really striving to get to. And we can provide a stipend or once we go through whatever that process is, that is set up a $2,000 check to help the smaller, those that can't get the funding because of the way the system is set up. I mean, I'd love to be able to be that entity. So I would forfeit my stipend to help an organization or a group get the funding they need to put forth a program or something. I love that idea, but I'm not sure that yes. this is the vehicle yes. for it we would end up probably having to hire staff and um, also legal issues with disbursement of funding and the um, liability that went with whatever the project might be. It would get pretty complicated and I'm not I'm not quite there with this committee that's that far along. But I think we are I think we are in that we're not in, I, I totally with you Candace on we're not the ones to put the money out but I think what you just said is could be a really cool role for this committee and really help the assembly. Like, and we need to time it in line with their process. But like, what if we could be, you know, have at a certain point in the year, wherever it's appropriate, kind of have a call for presentations or whatever we want to call it, and we allocate two or three of our meetings where what we do is we hear from, you know, community groups for you what like they have idea. coming up over the That's year. Exactly. You know, yeah. so then, so but then it's not us dispersing the money. It's right. basically us saying, okay, we recommend the assembly, um, you know, budgets X amount of dollars, and it would have to go. Th this is the hard part. It has to go through the health department or, you know, some other vehicle. So we're more in the engagement and then kind of feeding that information to you know, the assembly to budget the money and then it would have to go through a department. And see, there is yeah. the problem. I know, yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, what, I was, what, I was, what I would say to that though is I hear your heart where you're going, but I'm also of the inclination that this is not really the vehicle of be dispersing funds to various groups uh, uh, because there's always some, some blowback, kickback about this one versus that one. And, and uh, how do we differentiate and all of that kind of stuff. But but I, I feel you, I see where you're going, but are we the group to be dispersing funds? And I, I kind of hear what you're saying, that we can run interference for a group and then run it by the assembly or whatever and, and make recommendations and that kind of thing. But if you say it, that's where it gets held up and all of that. But can we basically legally dole out funding to groups. Yeah, I'm so I'm gonna intervene here and I'm gonna say that that is, I was actually just writing down, I need to talk to assembly council about the possibility of, um, as, of doing something like this because what I am hearing is um, 
the desire to set up a parallel to the mayor's community grants, but set up a parallel for that, where it is the assembly's equity grants, right? Where, um, in which case, we wouldn't have to give the money to a specific municipal department to could stay within the assembly branch. We'd still have to work with the purchasing department to get, you know, do the grant agreements and get the money out the door. But um, I think it would be a smoother process. Now, whether that's something that the assembly branch is interested in taking on the responsibility of setting up and, and dealing with a grant program like that, I'm tell you, I don't know. I'm not going to speak for the chair um, or the clerk. But that is something that I could even start with. Is it even legally possible for us to do something like that? I think that needs to be the first question before we even talking about setting money aside for something like that. I mean, I think it's, I think that would be an awesome, I, I hadn't thought about the way that we're talking about it now, but I, I just think it would could be an awesome role for us because I think you're absolutely right that this committee would attract a whole bunch of amazing projects and organizations that are not going to be responding to a health department RFP. And I, and I think we're thinking right now about municipal money, but I'm just remembering United Way is on this committee. We could invite Rasmussen, we could invite the Community Foundation, we could com invite other funders to participate in learning about projects and organizations so that they then can direct more of their funding towards it. So I think, I guess what I hear you saying, Celeste, is one of our jobs should be to increase resources to BIPOC-led and for organizations and events. Exactly, and I can't express enough when I was the um, director of OEO under Mayor Mark Baggage, we had that whole diversity month and funding would come to the OEO. It was a different stream through, per, I mean, through United Way. They, United Way was the, they kept the funds for us, but we had a whole different funding source through United Way that um, organizations or businesses would donate and to so that we had money to go out in that community. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm saying, I just see smaller organizations that don't speak that same language. Mm -hmm. totally. Uh, to, to secure those funds and, and and we're helping them to help our community so that they see that we see that they're out there um, in a whole different way so that's 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 all I'm, I'm sharing I just know it's not going to be the same it's not going to look like something you're comfortable with because this is different we're, we're, we're doing business differently because we're looking for a different result than what we've been getting previously yeah, yeah, and I agree kind of what what Thea was saying a minute ago. I mean, our whole purpose and sole purpose is fighting for equity, you know, uh, on all levels, and specifically through the municipality. Uh, but but I like the idea of inviting or acting as a liaison between those organizations or what have you that may need some type of funding and those. Uh, organizations, foundations, or what have you, that have sources of funding, yeah. and getting the two in the room together and yeah. kind of pushing that along, you know, I kind of like that idea of uh, embracing it in that way and interfacing mm -hmm. with it that way. Uh, even, even not just those outside organizations, but also uh, embracing the fight, <laughs> quote unquote, because that's why we're here, even with... Uh, uh, assembly administration or what have you to try to effectuate some things mm -hmm. throughout the community that would make everything more equitable for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, I, I also just want to underscore what you just said, Celeste, about when you did the diversity month, you, you just mentioned businesses donated too. And I think that, like, if we could get more in the habit of kind of braiding funding together and actually 
United Way, that's part of their new strategic plan is to really build up their capacity to do that. And as we know, during COVID, there was some attempts that did not go great. But we're learning, right? We're all learning. And I think there, that could be a really awesome vehicle if we could actually help kind of, you know, bring businesses in. And, and maybe we're working with an entity like United Way that's, you know, that way the assembly could put its money there maybe, or, you know, somehow we could rate it together that way. And I'm just remembering, I wrote it down last, last time, Pastor May, you said, Equity is equal opportunity predicated on equal resources. There it is. That's what we're talking about. There it is. Yes. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. yeah. And let, 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 me, let me do this if I might. And that is this, you know, there's a saying, and, and, and for lack of a better way to do it, this and, and take preaching, we start out chasing deer and wind up on rabbit trails. And so I think we did it in reverse. Uh, we had some rabbit trails, but we landed on a deer. <laughs> and, 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 and so, and, and I said all that to say this, we started out talking about honorary, and, 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 and we've embraced a whole nother uh, view, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, as a result of that. And so, and, and basically we've come under some new business stuff, this which, which just would, you know, kind of, fall in line with and so my thing is since since he, he's brought us all this information and we parked on honorarium maybe we need to make a determination on that and then move forward with the process mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And, and 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 come back on the uh, new visit thing and do this and do visit or what have you so do we want to if i might mm -hmm. do we want to request honorarium yeah you know i i mean you just opposed <laughs> over against uh, the honorary versus the need based deal. Do we want to even request? You said we coming in asking for funding. Yeah, that that you know like that picture. But <laughs> you know. But anyway, do we request the honorarium, or do we not request the honorarium? I just I found the charter kind of just read this section where we talked about it. Sorry, it's just taking a second. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Uh, honor. Okay, so what we said is an honorary per meeting may be available to a committee member who is not already being compensated for committee work. To request honorary for participation on the committee, please contact the culture. So, pretty general. Yeah. But I think the difference is, or the thing we want to be careful of in my mind is, it's for the time you're spending at the committee meetings right now. So it's not bigger than that at this point. I think it could be, because we could spend more time, you know, with planning. You know, there could be other things other we end up doing, but right now we're just doing our meetings. So, so just asking a question. So are you saying then that we should put forth, I, I already have a motion on the table for 50,000. Did you put a number on it? I did fifty thousand. Okay. Okay. And I kind of backed off from that much, but anyway, go ahead. I just, said, <laughs> you know, and I hear you, Dia. You know, wanting to request funding because we're just starting out. But I, I just believe that we should request the funding because we're starting up, and we don't know what we might need. If you want to be specific about honorariums or honorarium, whatever. I mean, I, I just think we need some funding. I, and I guess it comes back to me belonging to organizations all the time that don't have the money. And we struggle to try to do anything to the point where we're coming out of our own pocket to move the organization forward. That's why I'm just like, it's, it's the, the, the proper time now. What's the harm in requesting the funding? I don't know. And I, and I know we're motioning and all of that, but if we had a whole major discussion on operation, and we kind of said we do a lot of stuff consensually, you know, by consensus, what have you, without a whole lot of, you know, uh, quotation and all of that kind of stuff. But anyway, 
Uh, my thing is, if we're going to do the funding, if we want to do the honorary thing, then my my recommendation is still, you said 50, I would add 10 to that and do 60 because that would cover the whole committee, whether they wanted it or not. And if those who did want it, like my friend here, yes, who, who did not want it, it would not have to receive it. And uh, uh, it would just roll back into the funding. But I would not be comfortable for not having it available for everyone. If it's made available to everyone, then nobody has a kickback. So you my, may not want it, but then there's no kickback on it. So I would be comfortable with that amount if we're requesting it for not just one purpose, but for three purposes, which I think we've talked about here. One, for planning. Two for community engagement, three for committee honoraria, and maybe at this point we don't have to divvy it up right now, or even be a ton more specific than that. But I think, like at our last meeting, we talked about um, even having, um, you know, uh, I think it was Cameron talked about the person from Seattle, it, maybe having someone come and and kind of help walk us through some planning, or maybe it's just us having some additional sessions where we can kind of hone in on like the conversation we just had, you know, what our purpose is and really where we want to spend our time over the next year. Um, and and committee members could get honorary for that time as well. But I guess I would feel, and then, and then I think it'd be great if we also had some funds to be able to go and invite people to come in to talk to the committee and maybe compensate them for their time I guess I'm comfortable with your number as long as it's not just for honorarium. Well, well, well. Here's the thing, and I and, and I can go along with that. Uh, that three prong focus that you just uh, uh, mentioned uh, for for the funding. Uh, the thing of it is, though, if if per se, per se I know what you uh, what you are, your prognosis is of the honorarium, but if you get more folk that say yay than nay. And then there it goes, uh, so to speak. But at least it would be on paper mm -hmm. that we had this three-prong yep. focus yep. for the funding. And so I, you know, I don't have no, any issue with that. And then if we still have the option to do the revision yeah. in yeah. April, yeah. if if we have this great plan together, and what do you think of that? And if we saw what we needed more, then we. Needed more. I love that the three tier approach um, and who's to say when we start the honorary it could be months from now who's to say it's going to be approved first of all well, I'm just saying, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. if I can just say on that with the honorary I to me it's and I think will be questioned my expectation as with the COVID vaccination committee was that we're attending because there's something maybe unique about our community that we know that we're bringing into the meeting and also some commitment might be a big word but some obligation to at least share it so I you know I it's voluntary to come if you want but you know I, I would like that specific not just for attending but we are expecting something for this in exchange that's why I think that defining it the eligibility for it uh, is important. So, so we're going to move this motion. Well, the, first, the first part of elig eligibility is you got to show up. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, can, can and, you mm -hmm. confirm the motion? <laughs> so, so, so I, I, I'm trying to get it. Uh, yeah. I try to get around that, yeah, so to speak. Uh, I mean, you mentioned the fifty thousand figure, and she said she could go along with the sixty. And so my thing is, I understand you want to make a motion and all that, but we agree that we can do some things consensually. And uh, so, oh, uh, so no motion. So we don't have to have a motion, okay. but we can we can agree on the figure uh, versus the fifty versus the sixty. So I'm and, thinking. Are you against the sixty? No, I'm thinking if we're going to do all of that, I'm to your hundred thousand. <laughs> to what? Let's go for the sixty. <laughs> to what? I'm to your hundred thousand. If we're going to do all yeah. that, no. 
Okay, I, I'm good with the sixty thousand. Yeah. I think that's because see, if if everybody went after on the radio, that would cover it. But if they don't, then we got something for those other two prongs. Can I just ask before we make a final decision before Celeste Cecily, Felipe, Felix, can you just give us your, you know, you know the politics, you know, kind of the vibe, like how do you have, just get just tell us a little bit how how is this going to be received. And, how, and, and like, if we take that three-pronged approach, is that a good idea? Like, what's your feeling? Yeah, you know, I'm happy to respond to that question openly and honestly. But I guess I'll start my response by saying, you know, I think the committee also needs to think about just ignoring all of the negative that I'm exactly. about to see you, right? So, the negative is, this committee's going to get attacked, likely, if mm -hmm. people notice it and they say, ooh, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. So this committee will get attacked, it'll become part of the sort of right-wing atmosphere, um, and um, likely going to get vetoed, uh, might be a point of contention in the budget, who knows. Um, I don't think any of those things are things that we can't overcome, and um, you know, I think you're going to have a, some assembly members who will feel comfortable and who will be able to defend this. And I think the more that this committee can help um, sort of working with some of those assembly members, reaching out to assembly members, letting them know, hey, this request is coming and here's why and here's why I think you should, should support it, um, I think that will be helpful. But overall, um, I think there's a, a path to making this successful despite all of the negative that's probably gonna come. Yes, and, and let me say this, let me say this, this just for the record, me being a part of this committee, I'm attacked. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm right there. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So any, anyway, anyway, you good with the 60? Yeah. Yeah. I'm good with whatever the committee does. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Just before you walk out, out the door, wait, wait, before you walk out the door, we have a consensus that we request the 60. Yes. That's great. Right. For the three yes. wrong purposes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, community, community engagement, engagement, and honor. Right. I love it. Okay, yeah. perfect. All right, we good. Everybody yeah, good? Yeah, good job. No. Oh, oh you're not? But I don't have to be because the rest of y'all. Yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> we got a consensus on Can we hear, can you just tell us a little bit more about where you're Yeah, I, again, um, it seems to me that we're sort of flying by the seat of our pants and it, to um, be a committee that has a little gravitas uh, to be taken seriously. I would like to see us do this in a more organized fashion. In other words, if we're asking for money, we want it for this, a specific reason. Um, and this reason is aligned with our mission. Well, I guess mission is the right word. I didn't turn on my mic, I'm sorry. Um, so in that respect, I would like to thank you. Yeah. I would like to see us um, have more planning and head for something like an April budget revision um, rather than do this today. That's my reason, my only reason for, well, a lot of reasons <laughs> for objecting. Okay, and, and it's good for us to hear and understand that. My yeah. thing is, is uh, there, you, you said, strategic structuring and that kind of thing, and, and we've got three, you said planning, honorarium, and what was the other one? Community. Community, acute community engagement. Those three things would be the specifics of the request, and go ahead. Again, Pastor May, you're talking to an accountant. <laughs> okay, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. So community engagement would consist of these things that require this kind of money. I think we might have a chance, a better chance of, of receiving those funds if we had a more specific, uh, a, a, a well-organized, it's like having a business plan. You know, people will invest if you have a business plan, but if you just say, give me some money, they're a lot more reluctant to do that. So that's what I would like to see us do in order that people take us seriously, quite honestly. And I understand that, I understand that. I understand that, and I, and I jump on, on Mr. Rivera's back right now. Uh, I'll blow the negativity out the window, ask for the money, and then get come with a strategic plan for April. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think 
I totally agree with Constance. Is it Candace? Candace. Candace. I'm sorry, Candace. Yes, I totally agree with that too. But I feel like we're new, we're different, we're paving the way and expecting that they will not approve it anyway. It'll give us time for April to really define because that's to me too. I'd like for the committee, because like you said, there's a lot more scrutiny now with just the agenda that people talk about it as soon as the agenda goes live online. And so I'd like the community, any community member that's contacted by anyone to have a uh, soundbite of what we're using this money for because that would allow us to be taken more seriously because at this point our intentions are great but if we can all articulate what that is and be united in that mission I think the more effective will be. I would also like to see input from more community members I know that's or committee members. Yeah, yeah that was kind of short notice on the meeting I think. I know I'm, that's actually partly why we don't have as many folks here because our regular day was Thanksgiving so you know so we switched it to the week before and and, and the the note the um, I changed the invite a couple like before Jasmine sent it out but still people you know that might be why we have low attendance and I do feel nervous about putting this in without more committee members because just like Felix said, you know, we're gonna need to, to have a clear, or just like you all said, we're, we're gonna need to have a clear set of talking points for people. Sure. And, and my only response to that would be this, that there is a budget meeting on the agenda for when? Tuesday. Tuesday. And so if we, if we put in the request now, on, based upon that three-prong idea that we've talked about, and per chance, per chance it gets passed, then we've, at least we've got on the books, and then we can come back and able to deal with whatever we need to deal with uh, for, for a revisit, revision, or do whatever. But if we, if we, don't request anything at this particular point and then we'll be waiting till April uh, to come up and then we really have to be on the ball because that's only one shot and now we got two shots and so I would buy a record and we take our shot and then then revisit it if we have to but I think the consensus already is that we've done that already but we wanted to hear you yeah, yeah, and, and we appreciate that because it's a, right. It's a, it's important points you brought up, and, and we'll have to be more structured going forward. But right now, we take the shot. But I, but I guess I'm wavering. Sorry, Pastor May, um, because I, I'm just thinking today's Thursday. It's not Thursday anymore. Today's Friday, and so we've got Friday and Monday to write something up. I don't really have time to write something up, and. I don't think we have time to get our committee yeah. oriented. So I just feel like I don't know if we have a shot right now. So I guess my question would be, my question would be is what Mr. Rivera, as I understood it, said that the co-chairs could just basically submit a letter and, and then they would present it to the assembly. Could you pull up the amendment? And, and, and so my thing session. is, uh, that we had on uh, the 10th. So I'm going to pull up just so that everyone can see concretely um, on the screen what I mean by adding it to an amendment so, just so, you, know, so you all can see. I, I suspect that um, Yes, it's short notice. Um, yes, even assembly members are wary about um, approving things, especially in our budget, um, that are given to us on short notice. Um, that said, it's not like it hasn't happened before. Um, I think adding it, adding the language into the amendment, I think is gonna be the easy part. I think the more 
onerous part is going to be having some type of letter from the co-chairs um, that explains why you're requesting this and why you hope the assembly members support this. Um, and that could be sent as, as, as late as Tuesday, although I hope you would at least send it on Monday. Um, and it doesn't have to be, you know, a, a three-page letter. It can just literally be a few paragraphs of, here's what we're doing, here's why we're requesting it, here's, we're going to do something more structured in April, but for now, sort of, this is the shot we're taking, and we hope that you um, agree with us. Yeah, the amendment packet that was presented at the November 10th work session. So when you're speaking about an amendment packet, that is relating to? Yeah, so amendments that are being made to the budget. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so on Tuesday it's going to be a whole long process where we look at a bunch of different amendments. So the easiest way to get there yeah. is um, if you just go to the assembly site and then go to meetings, work sessions, uh, and then November 10th, it'll be on there. So I, I guess what I'm hearing is from earlier and then even from now, uh, you were saying that the chairs could submit uh, a, a letter, a very brief letter, a couple of paragraphs, requesting the funding to uh, our liaisons, and then you guys would bring it to the Mm, oh, no. How does that work? No. So what what I will do is I hear the the consensus vote, although I, I understand there are some folks who are wavering. Uh, what I will do is I will talk to um, the no, not not that page. It's the um, so if you go back up uh, to the assembly site, um, yeah, if you just click assembly website. Then you go to meetings, and then assembly work sessions. Then scroll to November 10th, and then open up that document. I can't read it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll try to make it. I can do it. <laughs> um, so if you scroll down to the amendment, no, no, just take this with me. Uh, there's an assembly amendment in here. So basically what's, hap what's gonna happen on Tuesday is there's gonna be two or three omnibus amendments, meaning, so there's like, I don't know, there's 21 pages of amendments in this document. They're gonna be consolidated into just two or three different amendments. Um, so if you go to, there's a, one of these GG amendments that's just for the assembly, so if you just keep scrolling down, you'll find it eventually. It's sponsored by Suzanne and by Chris. Oh, actually, okay, that was it. Okay, so there's this amendment that is just for the legislative branch. It's it's almost a million dollars now, and it's to do a whole bunch of different things, right? Uh, if you scroll down a little bit, just so I make sure. So there's five there's five different lines in here. Basically, what I would ask is that it's just line number six in this amendment. It's for uh, the Anchorage Equity Committee of the Assembly for the three things amount. Um, I, get, I guess question, you would just want this as one-time funding or recurring funding? I think right now just one Just one time? time. Okay, so then I denote it as one-time funding for $60,000, right? Mm -hmm. So that, that's how the amendment would be structured. It would, it would be fairly simple there. It would so, be too much. So what would be the, the easiest, easiest way to do that if, I mean, Hear me, hear me out. The, the question would be, as you said, one time versus recurring. Okay, if we went for recurring, then we would not have to do the fight to get it back on the, before the uh, assembly in the ensuing years. So my thing is, my thing is we would make it recurring and then uh, deal with how much or how little or whatever going forward or whatever. Make sense? Yeah, I mean, that's certainly, if that is something that the committee wants, I can push for it to be recurring funding. Um, yeah. So what you would need, according to looking at that, what you would need, if we, if, we, if we became number six on there, in the middle of that where it says, I think, description, is that description? Yes. 
Uh, okay, so, where it says description, you need those three points. Yeah, I, I don't need anything from you all. I think I have everything I need to have uh, to put uh, it in the amendment. Um, I think what I what I awesome. need from you all is language, sort of the a prescriptive narrative that would go to the assembly members. You can either send it to all of them or just a few of them. However, this committee wants that would explain more than just the few words that are going to go in the amendment. Mm -hmm. So we would just need to draft up, like you said, a couple of paragraphs that letter that goes to the assembly members. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, and and that way that will cover it. We, we can do that. I mean, you're kind of convincing me that I want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean I'm still kind of on Candace's bandwagon, but I also feel like um, I know it's only three of us left. I guess the part I'm, to be honest, I'm I'm. I feel okay about, I could probably, I've got a half an hour right there, I could squeeze in writing a letter and share it with you and you could, you know, we could toss it back and forth. Um, and I think we've had a good discussion about what, what it would be for. Um, I'm still worried that like Taffy's not here, like some of our main folks aren't here and I don't want people feeling like we're doing stuff without them. Right. Well, well. Here's the thing. Here's so the thing. Would be email it out. Here's the thing. If if we if, if we could get the paragraph or two mm -hmm. and get it submitted, you know, we work on that and get it submitted. I, I think the majority of the committee would be okay with the fact that we did get some funding mm -hmm. if we if it's approved versus not having to take a shot. Mm -hmm. I would hate to not take a shot at it. Mm -hmm. we have not an everybody's in account. I know when we have an opportunity to do so, you know, I would hate not to take that shot. Okay, so say yeah. tomorrow you and I are able to get a, a letter together, and Jasmine, we just heard from Felix that we shouldn't send things out to the committee, but tomorrow if we got it to you, would you be able, I guess I'm just wondering, do we have time to circulate it to the committee and say, you know, we keep them out there, say we have this... You know, well, as Mr. Rivera was saying earlier, he'd rather have it on Monday, but he couldn't do it as early as Tuesday morning. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, at least give people the opportunity to say, you know, no, I'm not in favor of this, or at least know about it. I'm just worried that, I'm worried that what's going to happen is there's going to be all that negativity, and then people in our committee are going to be like, oh, yeah, we didn't even know that was happening. And that could look really bad. That worries me. Okay. You know, and then there's a the flip side. I would get closer to the mic, and we're running out of time. Yeah. But the flip side of that is, we could always be chasing our tails as it relates to committee member participation and what we gonna do and what we're not gonna do and who's here and who's yeah. not here yeah. and all that. And so my thing is, we had a meeting, it was scheduled, it was on the books, we're here, and uh, even if negativity is going to come in some shape, form, or fashion toward we equity, it is going to come at regardless. And so if we were able to secure some kind of funding, I think they would be okay with that going forward, and then we will just determine what we use it. Mm -hmm. That's just my, my story that I'm speaking to you. I mean, on our agenda, we had municipal budget discussions, so I guess that's partly what we've been doing. And then we had discussion addressing assembly plans for the upcoming year, which is partly what we've been doing. So I, I was just thinking, like, oh, but this wasn't even on our agenda, but I guess in a way it was. Yeah, well, you know, in the original meeting, uh, uh, Mr. Rivera stated that the logistics portion of the meeting would take quite a bit of time. Yeah, and I and said then it showed up and it said ten minutes, <laughs> yeah, and so me. we took the whole meeting yeah. for logistics. Not and, my fault. And, <laughs> and so and so we we just had to table the rest of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I mean, I feel like I, I guess I'm also just. I just don't want anyone to feel like we're doing things without their involvement, is all. I understand. Yeah. And, but the, the, the flip side, four our committee members left, we had the consensus to do it. 
And so after they leave to turn around and say we're not going to do it, it would be counterproductive, I think. Mm -hmm. And so I think uh, we already have a consensus to do it, but we should well, quit, fl quit floundering and just floundering. And quit floundering, and, we floundering. Just, and we'll deal with what comes. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Well, I'm willing to. Um, I'm willing to keep. I don't know. I'm, I'm definitely willing to help write a letter and get it out to our committee, and let them know we've got a quick turnaround. I guess I want to. I want to. I want to. Um, if possible, maybe it's not possible, but. Um, is, is there any way we can make a kind of final decision on Monday? I mean, what if people write back and are like really against it? At this particular point, we're going back and forth yeah. on 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 predicated upon who's not here. Mm -hmm. Okay, those who came, we have a consensus. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know that, uh, I, my thing would be, if we wrote anything to the committee, we, we write and let them know what we have done. Mm -hmm. it, you know, versus versus trying to get a committee decision, you know, between now and Monday. And just, just one other, just sort of logistical question. So say we get awarded a budget, that budget sits at the clerk's office? It'll sit in the legislative branch. And so how does it get dispersed? So it's like, say, we want to, um, I, I don't know, pay yeah. someone to help us with our planning. Yeah, so you would work with the clerk's office um, to get the funding dispersed. There's a, there's possibly a few different ways. It would either be sort of votes of the committee or it would be at the direction of the assembly chair. So the assembly chair would approve whatever funding requests would come out of the committee. We'd have to work through what that what the pathways might look like. I mean, just given that we don't have a super rigid structure, I just wonder if, yeah. Yeah, I just don't want anyone to, I don't, it's not that I, I know we're gonna get blowback, but I just don't want us to like come apart as a committee because of it. That's my main worry. Well, my thing is if we come apart on, on, on going after some funding and, and, and you know, if we do happen, uh, and, and, and the plan of God to receive the funding, uh, we get a whole bunch of blowback on that. I don't know where we are as a committee. Yeah. <laughs> you know, okay. you know and, yeah. and, 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 and my thing is, really, I have no issue with the blowback, mm -hmm. even if there is some, uh, and I don't think the committee would fall apart because of what we are about. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, if sixty thousand dollars that would benefit the committee is going to tear up a committee, I'm wondering what do we really have? Mm -hmm. you know? So, if I could provide a couple pieces of advice, so one of the things that's that's helpful um, is developing some types excuse, of standards. Excuse, excuse me, Mr. Rivera, before you go forward. Sure. Let, let me do this since we are down to assembly protocol. Uh, can we all agree that it's six o'clock? Can we all agree to extend the minute by the meeting by five minutes? Consensus, everybody okay with that? All right. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Um, good catch. So, um, you know, one of the pieces of advice I would give is, I think it's always helpful when making these types of decisions, because this is, you know, this was a vote in a committee, which committees do sometimes take votes. Um, yeah. It's always helpful to have some type of uh, definition or established quorum, right? Because most other committees will have, you need uh, a majority to vote. I don't think this committee has that, and I don't know if a quorum is necessarily defined in the charter. Not, good point. But having some type of definition, I think, will we'll go into the future to help members who don't attend, which you know, my philosophy on that is, if you can't attend a meeting, then you need to trust to the people who were in the meeting that they made the best decision possible. You, but despite that, at least having some type of number that says there has to be at least 
either a majority, which would be, I think, maybe difficult for this committee, but maybe community councils, not that this committee is equivalent, but some community councils do, like, you need 10 people to attend, and that is a quorum. And then, and only then can you actually take votes, something like that. I think developing that kind of standard might help prevent this in the future where you know you only have to take a vote if you have this many people, and if you achieve that many people, then that sort of counts as a uh, consensus of the committee. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. Yeah, great. And, and, and my thing is, if, if we hop along with this kind of, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm wiping out a calendar to be here. Okay, and we have along with this kind of uh, commitment from the committee, we might need to rethink the whole shebang. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I mean, I, 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 I'm killing my time now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And we have to double back, and I've spent an hour and a half out here. Mm -hmm. You know, that's mm -hmm. that's that's a waste for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I could have been doing what I mm -hmm. probably could have, would have, should have been. Mm -hmm. you know I hear saying? you. Yeah. 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 Okay, so we'll work on a letter tomorrow and send it out by the clerk's office. So, for make sure everyone's aware. Okay. Yeah. So, your time frame for, for that? Um, I can work on it at uh, like 10 30. You can work on it like 10 30? At 10 30. At 10.30? Yeah, so I'll send it to you after that. Okay. Like okay, and then and then I'll add my two cents or whatever. And uh, so later in the afternoon, do you have time to look at it or you kind of oh, go back um, and forth or what, what the deal is? Um, I'll send it to you after the meeting. Whenever you send it back to me, I'll just, yeah, I'll just double, I'll just multitask. <laughs> so by eleven, you saying? I said you. Okay, okay. That's the other one. It's gonna cost me to alter some stuff, but I'll do it. Okay. I'll do it. Yeah, I mean major altering, but this I'll do it. This is exciting. I'll do it. Okay. Since I've advocated so much. I know. I was gonna say you're really right. pushing my envelope, so you know, it's good. That's what we're here for. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, I think we can call. Oh, wait, we have to say, are there any audience members who would like to participate? Seeing none. Yeah. Okay, turn, right? Right. All right. Yeah, right. Thanks, everyone.